Dear brothers and sisters, first of all, I would like to thank my friend Neville and his team at Aid to the Church in Need, who invited me to give this talk in Westminster. I would also like to thank the administrator, Canon Christopher Tuckwell, and the clergy who gracefully welcomed us in the cathedral. Thank you all for being with us today in this meeting to hear about the Christians of Lebanon and the Middle East and to express your solidarity with them. I want to thank especially all the benefactors of the aid to the church in need in Great Britain who are supporting different Christian communities all over the world. First, I present myself. I am Elias Nassar, Maronite Catholic Archbishop of Sidon in South Lebanon. I was ordained bishop on the 11th of February 2006 at the age of 45 years. I hold a baccalaureate in civil engineering from the American University of Beirut and a doctorate in theology from the Catholic Institute of Paris and a license in canon law from Lateran University in Rome. The Diocese of Sidon is very particular because its Christians live among the main confessional families of Lebanon, the Sunni Muslims, the Shiite Muslims, and the Druze. Our Lord Jesus Christ and his mother Mary came to Sidon. Sidon is a part of the Holy Land and is mentioned several times in the Bible, as well as Lebanon is mentioned 72 times. According to the official register, the number of Maronites in the diocese is 200,000. Due to the consecutive wars in the last century, the actual number of Maronites who are living in my realm is reduced to about 30,000 only, because many of them were forced to leave their villages after enduring persecution, massacres, damage to their homes and properties. Actually, they endure a lot of challenges, mainly those related to economic and safety issues. Lebanon is going through a great economic crisis. Its debt amounts to 60 billion US dollars. The unemployment is widespread, and the situation has become much worse due to the influx of about 2 million Syrians refugees to Lebanon. These Syrians share the Lebanese infrastructure, public services such as electricity, water, fuel, telephone, and work without being sufficiently helped from the United Nations and other countries. In addition to the general economic crisis, the Christians of Sidon, my diocese, do not have a lot of opportunities. They don't have enough Christian institutions to employ them, and they have difficulty to work in the private sector of Islamic business owners because they tend to employ, these tend to employ persons from their communities. This bad situation forces the Christians to leave the diocese to other parts of Lebanon or to emigrate to foreign countries. Because of the lack of means and support of the Lebanese government towards those Christians, I felt that it is my duty to support my community in order to face its big challenges. And I make a call for everyone to help and support Christians to stay in the Middle East so that they can continue to witness to Christ 
and his evangelical values. So far, my strategy focused on the following points. First, doing my best to attach the Christians to Jesus, to his teaching, and to his church. For this, I began the construction of one of the biggest centers in South Lebanon for spiritual retreats and Christian formation. This center can accommodate 100 people. Simultaneously, it aims to receive ecumenical and interreligious meetings to promote mutual understanding and respect, fraternity and unity. My second plan consists of building residential apartments at low cost to encourage mainly the young Christian couples to stay and be attached to the land of their ancestors. So far, we started the construction of two projects with a total of 138 apartments. And very soon, we will start the construction of a third project of 69 apartments. These projects require a huge investment. We have collected part of what we need, and we have to borrow more from the banks. My third plan is related to education. It aims to promote the existing institutions and create new ones in order to give testimony to Christian faith and values within the multi-confessional atmosphere of the diocese. The diocese already own and run two schools, one secondary in the village of Derb Asim, not far from Sidon, and the second complementary in Beit Din in the Shuf region. The first school is running well, but the second needs more adequate buildings and furniture. My future projects consist of building other schools, a technical college maybe, and a university. My fourth plan is concentrated on creating economic projects of all sorts that suit the real situation. The main goal of these projects is to offer employments to our faithful. So far, I have developed the agricultural projects, mainly in choosing new species of fruit trees. I am trying to build, in the near future, some greenhouses in all altitudes to produce vegetables and flowers. I have established a touristic garden for all outdoor ceremonies in Beit Din, and I hope creating other touristic projects. Other projects concerning industrial work and commercial work are also under study. My fifth plan is related to the reconstruction of destroyed churches and the construction of new ones in the parishes. After the end of the war in Lebanon in 1990 and the beginning of the return of the Christians to their villages in the diocese, a great contracting job was held to reconstruct the buildings of the churches and the useful attached buildings such as halls for great assemblies and several pastoral activities and presbyteries. I have to thank aid to the church in need who have helped and are still helping many of these works. Unfortunately, due to the lack in its revenues, the diocese was not been able to afford much money for these works. Meanwhile, the administration of the diocese occupied the studies of the projects, the contracts with the concerned persons and teams, and the follow-up of the work. My sixth plan concerns the living of the priests. Because a great number of the parishes of the diocese became very weak and with small communities that cannot afford sufficient revenues for priests, I managed the living of the priests in a way to offer them 
the minimum for living, including the health security, the scholar fees for the children of married priests, the indemnity of the retired, and other several aids. This program is managed in share between the revenues of the parishes and the revenues of the diocese. And the seventh plan concern vocations. I have to thank God for the great number of vocations to priesthood and to the consecrated life in our diocese. Many youth are searching the example of our Lord. It's a big grace and a deep consolation for us. So I am encouraging these vocations. Actually, we have 10 vocations to priesthood, and I named a committee of priests to take care about them, and I'm supporting them financially. This year, the fees of the seminary amount to about 60,000 US dollars. Now about the situation of Christians in Lebanon and the Middle East. As you know through the mass media, the Christians of the Middle East are generally persecuted and discriminated against. All the Arab countries, except Lebanon, have Islamic regimes and Islamic leaders. Only Lebanon has a special civilian multi-confessional agreement regime. The president of the republic is always a Christian. The speaker of the parliament is a Shiite Muslim and the Prime Minister is a Sunni Muslim. Lebanon is a very particular model of states. Its people lived all over the centuries in total concordance and unity. Many of its cities and villages are mixed between Christians and Muslims who live together and share everything between them. All the conflicts that emerged in the Lebanese society were caused by the interference of several regional and occidental countries which are searching interest and power. The Saint Pope, John Paul II, looked kindly at the unique model of Lebanon and described it as a mission for the world. Unfortunately, the number of Christians in Lebanon and the Middle East is decreasing. In Lebanon, the percentage of Christians decreased about 35% in the last 70 years, and the actual percentage of the population is just 30%. In Israel, the percentage of Christians is, is less than 2%, and in Syria and Iraq, Christians decreased enormously in the last 15 years due to wars and persecution. Many people think that what is happening now in the Middle East is not just a result of accidental or occasional conflicts, but rather it is the intended consequences of the undermining policies and strategies of major countries. These policies and strategies are not only destroying the countries and societies of the Middle East and killing hundreds of thousands of its people, but are destroying the history of faith, the religious monuments, the model of multi-confessional communities living together, the international law of human rights, the dignity of mankind, and the figure of Christ emanating love, compassion, and forgiveness. What we need really in the Middle East is to stop all the wars and all kinds of provocation of, of, provocation of conflicts and discrimination. We need to live in peace, in liberty, in equality, and in justice. Only the Christian faith can inspire these values. So we need to keep Christians in the Middle East to spread these values and to build trust. 
Pope Benedict XVI understood this fact. So he promulgated an exhortation for Christians in the Middle East entitled Churches in the Middle East, Communion and Testimony. And he assembled an international synod of bishops to support the presence of Christians as well as to exhort influential political leaders to defend the rights and inter interests of Christians in the Middle East. All Christians all over the world and all humans of goodwill have to remember that the Lord Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem in Palestine and that he preached his gospel in Palestine and in Lebanon and that his church was first established in the Middle East and that the first pope of the Catholic Church, St. Peter, was a citizen of Palestine. So I urge all, all Christians abroad to support the presence of Christians in the Middle East by all means in order to preserve the Christian faith and history and in order to spread Christian faith and values which can build bridges between the different peoples and cultures and can help to establish peace, love, and justice in the whole world. Finally, I thank you for your presence, for listening, and for understanding. Thank you most of all, most of all, for your love, your faith, and your prayers. May our Lord Jesus Christ bless you all, and may his blessed mother, Mary, pray for you. Thank you.